Christians. He had travelled to Coventry to High for work holding. Um, and I'm here with Rob Beckett. Now, Rob, you've taken on an agency, Spriter, Centric Grippers. Now, you've got a large range of Centric Grippers. Can we start with this particular model, please, Rob? Yeah, hi, Joe. Yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, the one that you've just picked on there is the MZU Vice from Spriter, which what we class as the Universal Vice. What we mean by that is there's a lot more draw options on that vice compared to the other ones in the range. So when you say draw options, are these like on a on a uh, tenon connection and, and you've got to bolt them on and off the draw options? And, and what kind of draw options? I see you've got step drawers here, but what other draw options are available for this particular model? And also, what kind of sizes do they come in? For that model, we've got um, soft drawers, pendulum drawers, um, gripper drawers, like with the raw material clamping. There's a lot more inserts for room to pendulum what material we're gripping as well. The vices, we can be from anywhere from a 36 mil jaw width up to 125 and higher if, if required. And is that on all the range, that kind of uh, size range? That size range, yes, yeah, across the range of the sprites of vices, yes. And in regards to holding capacity, what kind of holding capacity do you get? On the um, jaw width, um, sorry, in the opening, do you mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so you, again, from the vice, you could be looking from about you know, 60 mil on the smaller vices up to 250, 300 in the opening. So it's safe to say that the sprites range kind of cover most sizes and applications. So in regards to the first model that we're looking at here, this is the universal model, which comes in lots of different sizes and lots of different jaw options. What about the clamping force? Um, what kind of what kind of clamping forces do you get and, and how do they vary in between the, 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 the sizes that they come in? The, um, the clamping force is the same pretty much around the range, um, anywhere from about 16 up to um, just about 40, 40 new means. Um, and then we, we recommend on that side that you will use a torque wrench rather than the, you know, a standard conventional wrench on it. Is that, is that to kind of get to, to achieve a stable process as well? So you're kind of making this, the process foolproof? Uh, that's right, Joe, yes, yeah. Rob, moving on to the second vice, what is the difference between the second one and the first one that we've just discussed? Okay, this one is what we class as the MZR, which is the raw material clamping vice. So the difference between these two is the jaw options were a bit more limited because it's just purely aimed at the raw material clamping. Now, do you need to crimp the components before clamping raw materials? And what type of materials can you hold with this particular unit? With the with this vice, um, no, you don't need any pre-op. The way that the sprites have constructed the vice with the hardened base, the hardened um, screw through the middle, there's no need for actually any pre-op work in the in the material, which just gives it its its advantage over the competitors. And in regards to different materials that it can grip, is there any limitations there? Uh, no, not on limitations as well. Um, we can grip most materials. Um, certain materials will just change the the jaws. Um, to make sure it actually grips. So we would double check that with sprites if it's on a material that we want to sure about. One difference I have noticed between the first model and the second model is that the first model is a two-piece jaw set. Now, this second model is a one-piece jaw set, so the master base jaw is part of the actual jaw. Does, is this where you're getting the additional clamping force and rigidity from, Rob? It is, Geo, yes. Yeah. So th when they've looked at it and redesigned uh, it, that's where we can get the additional... Uh, help to actually buy into it that avenue the um, pre-op. Now the fifth axis market is growing all the time in the UK more and more fifth axis machines are being sold. Are these vices predominantly for fifth axis machines and what other applications real life applications can you give us that you're selling or where they're going into the marketplace? We've um, predominantly you know quite a lot of them do go onto the five axis machines but we have done a lot on the standard three axis machines a um, couple on on some manual machines as well. Um, on the raw material, quite a lot of them have been actually on the um, five axis, and we have one the other day where the component was, it was 125 mil jaw width vice, it was about 400 mil high, um, and we were just gripping down on the jaws about 8 mil. So that was quite a big beast, and there were machine in a, the end piece was going to be a gearbox. So, I mean, that kind of illustrates the clamping force and rigidity you're getting from this product. It does, Joe, yeah, yes. Now, moving on to the third and final vice that we're discussing today, what is the difference between the third one and why would you choose this one over the first two? So, this vice is the MZQ, which is the quick change jaw vice. Now, the difference between this one compared to the other two is the ability to change the jaws quickly. 
the draw options are the same as what the, the first vice is. There's more draw options for it, um, but it's the ability to quick change the draws. So if you're looking to quick change draws, um, is that because you're looking to do lower volume work with this particular product? It would be, yes. Yeah. So if you needed to change your drawers for different size parts or um, your second ops, then this is the vice that would be most suited for it. Now, Rob, I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you illustrate how easy it is to change them jaws? And you've already shown me you don't even need a tool to actually change the jaws. Can you show um, the camera how this is done, please? Yeah, no problem, GL. So just on the side, there's just a button that you press in. Jaw comes off. Down, pick up your next one. Just like that. So can you take both jaws off for me, please, Rob? Yep. So that's the bottom of the vise and then obviously when you're ready to put the jaws back on uh, it's easy as one two three so basically there's just a button that you press which releases the jaw now can you explain the configuration of the master base jaw and how, the, uh, how it connects and kind of give me an example of the repeatability that you get so underneath the jaw you've got the dove which obviously locates on the jaw we've got the location dial as well so when you actually put that on as you can see, it locks in place, and then with the button, you're releasing the part to, to grip back under the other side of the delt, and then it's locked. Um, repeatability, you're looking between 5 and 10 microns. I've not seen um, a system like this before to change jaws. Is this unique to Spritzer? This is, well, for, I've only seen it on the Spritzer range, so as far as I'm aware, yes, it's unique to Spritzer on that side. Now, there's something else that I've noticed on this particular unit to the first two. Now, there's something at the bottom here that's different. Now, is this a zero point location system on the on, on the bottom of this particular unit. The others are, 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 are set up for toe clamps. That's right, Gio, yeah. I mean, this vice can be the same as the other two. This particular one, we've just got it set up on a, a zero point pallet underneath. So this one actually goes straight onto the system free RAPC. So, but we can do that on any of the vices that you see within the range. Um, we have different options as well tombstones, um, pyramids, other zero points that we can all supply with devices. Now, uh, we're not going to get into price today, but if someone was interested in this particular range of centric grippers, how should they get in touch with you to place an inquiry? Um, they can call the office or drop us an email at sales.hifor.com.